Hello, uh, welcome to Products with Pipelines, making IAC work for you. My name is Fred Guyonson, and I'm Principal Automation Architect with Sensa in Iceland. And with me today is Justin Roberts, Senior Network Engineer, also with Sensa. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been a network engineer for about 16 years. During that time, I've had a lot of focus on abstracting and programming on infrastructure and doing automation. Uh, starting with MPLS and now moving on to doing Terraform with on-premise data centers. Uh, when I'm not automating network infrastructure, I'm traveling the world, raving, or being a, the occasional wizard. Um, Justin? My name's Justin. I'm a senior network engineer here at Sensor as well. Um, I've been a network engineer for uh, about a decade now, um, and I've been recently interested in uh, IAC and automation, uh, mainly due to seeing uh, Frank Preston's uh, videos uh, on YouTube probably two years ago now, and I'm very happy to be in a position now where I can uh, actually do my own demo and show some cool stuff to other people. Uh, all right, so uh, getting started with uh, Infrastructure as Code, or IAC. Um, we are a fairly small company, 140 employees, and we have an even smaller team that are doing the automation and uh, infrastructure as code within our organization. Uh, at the moment, it's just the two of us. But we're trying to build a little platform that uh, other departments uh, can join us in uh, and automate products that we can deploy for our customers. Uh, due to our scale, we're doing this all with open source tools. Uh, and we wanna show you how you can use these tools to get started with infrastructure as code and automation. Uh, and we'll give you the code examples and such. So. Uh, to get started, obviously you select uh, your tool. We chose Terraform for various reasons, mainly because it's stateful, uh, which we prefer over Ansible, for instance. Uh, it's idempotent, um, barring some restrictions, occasional providers and logic in the way you set up modules can cause problems there, but if you do things correctly, uh, it definitely should be. Uh, additionally, it's multi-vendor, so we can use it for our Cisco stuff, uh, as well as our, our other VMware, FortiGate, and such. And it's free and open source. Uh, you can use it freely, but it also has enterprise products available and support uh, from HashiCorp if you need that. Um, once you've chosen your tool, you need to start abstracting your infrastructure. That's what we do with modules. Um, the modules represent units of infrastructure that gets deployed together such as a ACI tenant with verbs, bridge domains, application profiles, and the likes, as well as an L3 out, which has various route profiles, uh, routing uh, elements and such. Uh, we try to keep these very, very minimal in uh, inputs so that they're easy to use. Um, and we have same defaults within the modules so that you can minimize the inputs. Uh, there are some considerations when you're using Terraform modules. Uh, do not nest them too far, it can cause problems um, because of just complexity and such. Uh, additionally, if you're having modules depend on other modules and you want to pass data around, you know, there's a concept in Terraform called data source. Um, if you pass data from one data source to then read another data source and then use that data for a resource, you can cause regression within the Terraform plan, which will cause problems. For that reason, all our data input is happens on the product module level. Um, and then any mutations we need to do for data in the infrastructure deployment modules is done on a string basis instead of looking them up from the environment. Um, all the features that we create, or most of the features in each module is optional so that you can add and extend features without affecting uh, the prior customers or having to update the, the whole environment. Um, moving forward from just building up your modules and your little products uh, is getting collaborative. Um, that's where we introduce these two main tools that we use, uh, GitLab CI for the pipelining abilities. Uh, so we use the runners registered there to do our CI CD uh, and console also from HashiCorp where we will store our state uh, and we'll use it as a source of truth uh, when we render data in from GitLab. And we'll show you how that works during the demo. Um, some considerations when you're using Terraform for infrastructure as code, uh, you'll end up with one state per Terraform workspace per config set or repository. 
Um, we recommend that you use a mono repo for your customer code or your, your logical code, uh, all the Terraform that gets deployed um, for your customers, uh, things that you want to on and off board. Additionally, we have team repositories. So there's an ACI team that creates the modules and also creates the infrastructure components, such as the uh, L3 out paths and such that get consumed by the consumer code. Uh, and again, uh, we recommend avoiding deep nesting of modules. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, on the left hand side, you got the mono repo and you can see there's a products folder uh, under which we have those various products that are modules. In the main file, it just calls each product and sends in all the, uh, if the product is in, uh, enabled in console. And then you can see the product itself is built out of two different modules or, or various modules um, that it feeds the data into. And that's where all the logic happens. And those modules will look that data up from console, given the keys that we're sending in here. Uh, accelerating that, uh, once we've got this platform set up, now we've got a little uh, process to build new products. So we sit down with a core team, uh, say iOS XE and VMware ACI, build the core infrastructure modules with that team, allocate the resources that are going to be consumed by the consumer code. And then we create the templates that render that configuration data into console to be read by our modules and our product product modules. And then we write the consumer configuration for the consumer that wants to consume those products and render those values into console when we merge our branch into master, because we always work with our changes in branches and then we merge into master and that kicks off our pipelines. Um, so this is our new workflow for deployments. You write the minimal configuration for your customer, push that code into the GitLab, which kicks off a CI pipeline, grabs templates to render out that configuration into console. Once that's rendered out and put into console, uh, another pipeline is kicked off on the mono repo, which deploys that infrastructure and realizes it on your ACI, your FortiGate, and, and the rest of your environment. Um, expanding these capabilities is quite easy. There are 1,400 providers available today and 7,000 modules for Terraform. Um, you can extend your GitLab CI stages by adding policy enforcement, code testing and validation, informational webhooks that call your chat ops or your ticketing system and the likes. Uh, and additionally, you can create your own providers. And we've actually written a couple of providers in order to be able to present this demo here today, uh, all of which will be available at the end of the talk. Uh, so what does this all look like? We'll have a little short demo. Hello again. Uh, so we're going to run through a quick demo. Um, there's no time to cover everything in uh, finite detail, but uh, we're going to cover the majority of all the pipelining and stuff like that. Um, so here's a first quick one. This is the um, lab setup, uh, like a high level diagram. So we have an internet gateway, hosted firewall, and our internal services, which is going to be our ACI fabric. So what we're actually going to automate today, um, internet gateway is a Cisco iOS XE uh, layer 3 switch. Uh, for the firewall, we're using FortiGate VDOM, and then everything else is just within the Cisco ACI fabric. Um, so what's going to be automated is the dynamic VLAN and subnet allocations. Uh, we're going to do the VLAN and SVI creation and BGP peering on the internet gateway. We're going to create a virtual firewall. Uh, again, the dynamic VLAN subnet allocations. We're going to do VLAN creation, uh, router configuration, and interconnects for the firewall. On the ACI side, we are going to create a tenant, uh, the layer three outs, the routing configuration for the layer three outs. DRFs, application profiles, EPGs, and bridge domains as needed. Okay. So as Fred mentioned, we have the customer configuration repository. And within here, we've broken the configs up into the different products that we're using. Uh, this JSON blob here is a configuration representation of the configuration we're going to push out uh, for this fake customer of ours for the ACI. Um, as you can see, if you've ever used the ACI, this is fairly minimal as to what you, know, you would need to do if you were doing this through the GUI. Um, so once you have the configurations in here, you would push them to a branch and merge that into the master for the configuration, uh, customer configuration. 
uh, I've already created a branch just to save some time. So we're going to cross to here, we'll hit merge. So once this is merged into master, it's going to trigger a pipeline. So this is the first pipeline that uh, Freya was talking about. Um, this pipeline has a bunch of stages um, and will actually push all the configuration into a console itself. So the render stage is actually some Go templating that we've written uh, that will render the JSON into Terraform files. Uh, it also includes what we're calling the data mutation stage, um, which is where we actually do the dynamic uh, VLAN and subnet allocations from our IPAM. Uh, the reason we wanted to manage that with Terraform was so that we can manage the full lifecycle. So that once this customer config no longer exists, Terraform will actually go and um, remove the allocation from our IPAM. Um, so we don't have like leftover and old config and things like that hanging around, which is fairly common. Um, so we do the init, which is just grabbing all the providers that we need. We have validate, which is just validating that all the rendered uh, Terraform files are actually uh, valid. And then we have a plan. So if you have a look at the plan that was generated, we'll see that um, because it's a fresh config, it's just a whole bunch of add. Um, we'll go into this a bit more detailed on the second pipeline. But once you're happy with the plan there, back, and we can trigger the actual deployment, which is here in apply. Once that succeeds, it will actually trigger a downstream pipeline on the mono repo and pass in the uh, environmental variable for the Terraform workspace that we're doing, which is the customer, so that we have separation there. And just to show you guys how this all actually looks within console itself, um, we can jump across the console. So this is the key value store of console. You can use console for a lot more. At the moment, we're just using it for state storage and uh, configuration management. So this is our source of truth. We jump across into the customer and get to ACI, get into interfaces, layer three outs, F, CI transit network. And here are actually all, all, all the key values that we're gonna utilize to create the layer three out. Um, we can see here that this um, subnet was actually dynamically allocated to um, this layer three out. Hey. So if we go back to the pipeline, this should have triggered downstream and give us a link. Yep. Cool. So the this is the second pipeline where the actual configuration um, gets pushed into the devices. Um, it's very similar to the first one with the exception of um, that it's a mono repo, so we're using the Terraform uh, workspace to actually separate the different states and things like that. Um, again, we have the format. We're just checking that the format's correct, validation, checking that the data that it's sucked out of console and used into in the modules and stuff is all valid. Uh, and then that will generate a plan, which we can activate now. So while this is loading, one thing I should mention, um, and it's uh, you want to you want to read the plan before you just go and uh, hit apply, especially for this uh, portion, and especially while it's um, relatively fresh to your organization. The majority of problems that we've had with the IAC stuff that we've been deploying um, would have been uh, caught at this phase um, if people had read and understood uh, the plan properly without just applying. Um, yes. Uh, so I mean, we're happy with this plan, adding a whole bunch of resources. It's not a whole lot of change, but if you were doing um, you know, a particular change, you would want to come in here and have a look to make sure that the changes that you are seeing in the plan actually represent what uh, changes you actually want to um, push. But just to prove as well that um, this isn't all smoke and mirrors, this is the IOSXC router config at the moment. Nothing there, just some leftovers from when I was doing some testing. Okay, jump across to our APIC. There's no tenants on our lab APIC. And if we jump across to the order gate we're using for our firewall, uh, we can see that there's no VDOM called VD, uh, CDSY. Okay. Just to here. 
through the plan. So we're going to hit apply. This takes a little bit to run. Um, I just kind of want to mention that you know I did fork and uh, you know I either forked or completely rewrote uh, completely wrote new uh, providers for this uh, demo. Uh, any contributions or vendor support would be very much appreciated. As uh, took a little bit of time. You can see here Terraform initializes. It's going to scroll through a whole lot of stuff. Let's go down to the bottom. The majority of it's finished. Finish, finished. You should start seeing some resources in here. So in here now we've got this tenant. Yeah, I'm on. There we go. Okay. So uh, this is the you know, virtual firewall. Uh, sure it exists. Jump back to the APIC. Um, and here we go. Okay, so we have some navigation profiles, graphs, bridge domains, three outs. Jump in here. Routing actually works. SPF. So, sorry to go well, but um, so we can see here we've got full neighbor um, state relationship with Watergate firewall that we're using. Um, you can see that our warnings are starting to clear finally. And to our IOSXE stuff, we will see we have a neighbor here with firewall. Um, and that's it for the demo. So I hope uh, that was enjoyable for you guys. And um, I'll uh, hand you guys back to Freyr. Thank you for that, Justin. Um, so where do you move on from there? Uh, we have some noticeable mentions uh, that could sort of inform the future for this uh, platform. Uh, one of them is Packer, which we use to package and create virtual machine templates that can then be easily consumed by Terraform once you're deploying all the way into Azure, or AWS, or VMware. Uh, we recommend using HashiCorp Vault to pass secrets and store your secrets because you don't want them. You'll have a privileged machine to be your runner, but you still want your secrets to be safe. So we recommend using Vault for that. And additionally, there's a little application called Console Terraform Sync, which currently reacts to changes in services in Console and deploys Terraform configuration onto your infrastructure. In the next update, 0 0.4.0, they're gonna allow that trigger to happen when a key value is updated in console, which is what we're using to store our data. So moving forward, we can update the customer configuration and then console Terraform sync will kick off and deploy that infrastructure um, for your customers. Uh, here are the resources that we made available for you. We've got uh, our demo and all the customer code, the templates, uh, all on gitlab.com slash IAC demo. Uh, additionally, we have the modules that were written for ACI, the tenant and the L3 out posted on my GitHub and a provider as well as a small SDK, very limited at the moment for iOS XE hosted on Justin's GitHub. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining us here uh, on this talk today. Uh, it's been great being with you and have a very good Dubnet Create. Thank you very much.